Over the past several weeks, you've heard us talking about these seven elements of DMM, or discipleship making movements, and how our vision is to see a million people come to know Jesus in the next 10 years. In week one, you heard Chris talking about our coach by the name of Stan. And Stan, Stan is a coach um, over movements uh, all over the world where they have seen hundreds of thousands and millions come to know Jesus through this DMM strategy. The analogy that we were given was a sailboat. And the concept behind it was, if since we have no control over the wind, if we're obedient in raising our sails and cry out to God for Him to bring the wind, that we might be able to see a movement of God right here in West Texas. From focusing on God's Word, to multiplying extraordinary prayer, man, to casting vision and, 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 and going out amongst the lost. Those are just some of the elements that are part of this DMM training. But today I wanna to talk to you about element number seven of this discipleship making movement, which is ongoing coaching. This reminds me of how Pastor Chris had a church planning coach whenever he had the vision of planning a church right here in Lubbock. Picture this, 12 people in his living room that he shared this vision with, that constantly prayed and, and focused on God's word to be able to make experience life exist. In some ways you could look at this uh, coach as a discipling or a mentoring accountability partner. In other words, in us raising ourselves, where our prayer is that we would be able to see that movement of God and our discipleship, our discipleship making efforts would be more effective. I think Paul played a huge part in what uh, ongoing coaching looks like in the book of Romans. Romans 1, 8 through 12. He says, let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith in Him is being talked about all over the world. God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night, I bring your needs and you before God, whom I serve with all of my heart by spreading the good news about His Son. One of the things I always pray for is the opportunity, God willing, to come and at least see you, and at last to see you. For I long to visit you so I can bring you some spiritual gifts that will help you grow with the Lord. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, and I also want to be encouraged by yours. See, Paul was an awesome example of a coach. Your coach needs to be someone that is going to be constantly praying for you all the time that they know what's best for you and they're going to continue to, to, to pray for you and raise you up and your needs before God. The majority of the letters that Paul wrote uh, in the New Testament were actually uh, ongoing coaching letters. See, the majority of the letters were to churches that he had previously uh, planted and he wanted to continue. He, he, wanted to be there with them, but at times he couldn't. So he wrote a lot of letters to be able to lift them up and encourage them and continue to pour them into them. I look at these DMM elements and I think about how Pastor Chris prayed for me and he encouraged me as I became the campus pastor at Freedom. As a leader of a transition group, both on the inside and out, we have seen how important it is for accountability partners to be those people that are gonna be constantly encouraging you and praying into you and raising you before God. But we've also realized that the accountability partner that you have on the inside needs to be that you have somebody on the outside already set up. See, the truth is, in order for us to, to continue to pour into the guys at Freedom, we want to partner with them, we want to do life with them, we want to do ministry with them. That being said, we constantly pray and raise them up to God for one, that His transformation would continue in them, and two, 
that the guys would be surrounded by godly men and women that are going to continue to encourage and pray for them as well. About 14 weeks ago, we started this DMM training at the Lubbock County Detention Center. And we really pressed into the guys about them um, really getting out of their comfort zone and starting to pour into other men, asking people, if God, if, if God could do a miracle for you today, what would it be? And then immediately responding in prayer. We have seen groups start in the pods at the Lubbock County Detention Center. And, and man, we have seen people commit their lives through these, their lives to Jesus through these groups. A guy by the name of Greg, which is one of the residents of the Lubbock County Detention Center, he, a couple of weeks ago, he stood up and wanted to share a testimony as to how God was moving in their uh, living quarters, their pod. And he talked about how their group continues to grow and they continue to pour into men and continue to reveal to them the good news of Jesus. He really was wanting to platform the time to be able to invite more men to come and join their prayer group. During this time, he was explaining to them that it was gonna take a commitment and dedication from them, not necessarily to the group, but to God. As Greg has just recently uh, signed for his time, he's gonna be leaving the Lubbock County Detention Center. And we asked him, hey Greg, what is your idea? What is your thought behind this group? And Greg responded, well, that's easy. I've already, I'm already training two guys to take over that group whenever I get ready to leave. Ongoing coaching right there in the moment. In response to Paul and even to the story about Greg, I have two challenges for you today. One, challenge number one is find yourself a coach. I want to encourage you to go out and find a coach that is going to pour into you, that is going to pray for you, that is going to encourage you, and at times even be that disciplinary person in your life. We all need correction, and the last thing we think about our accountability partner is, oh man, uh, he's gonna let me slide on this one. No, that's what you call a friend. I'm asking you to go out and find a coach. Maybe the question for today should be is, who is mentoring me? Challenge number two, I want to encourage you to get signed up for the DMM training that's going to be get started here in a couple of weeks here at eLife. Maybe you're kind of like me and you didn't like the answer to question number one. I want to encourage you, if you're going to go on a search for an accountability partner or a coach, get plugged into the DMM training and watch how it reveals some things to you. We want you to be part of seeing a million people come to know Jesus in the next 10 years. And I have to tell you, in order for us to see that, we're going to have to raise ourselves. We're going to have to cry out to God and ask Him to bring the wind so that we might be able to see and experience a movement of God right here in West Texas. I want to invite our prayer team members to come up here in just a moment as, and lead us in a time of prayer as we ask God to press into us as to what that looks like in raising ourselves. I'm challenging you to get off the sidelines. I'm challenging you to get into the game and become a game changer for the kingdom of Jesus. Thanks for spending some time with us today. If you'd like to know more about what God is doing at Experience Life, you can visit our website at experiencelifenow.com. Please let us know if we can serve you or your family in any way. We hope to hear from you real soon.